everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to do these absolutely gorgeous cards. So it's actually a form of origami. It's called tea bag folding and this is the dahlia flower. So I just, I had an old, well not an old, I've got a book that I had all like ideas and inspirations in it and one of them I'd wrote down Claire tea bag dahlia flower. And Claire, she was on the design team for Trimcraft and she used to always do really nice different kind of origami folds whenever she used to share it on the Trimcraft design team page. So um, I hadn't been looking through that book for so long and then because I've not long moved I'm still sorting little bits and pieces out and I found that and all of the ideas in there so this one I had to give a go so what I did is I just popped in onto google dahlia fold or tea bag fold and it brought up this one here and it's really really easy and I'm going to talk you through it now this one's from 2004 it's Judy Hedrick so I mean it's a form of origami which has been around for hundreds of years so you know this has probably been done a long long time ago as well so this is what I've done, it's gorgeous. They are so, so nice. If you just pop in tea bag origami folds, you will get hundreds of different designs and I think you'll get hooked. So it's a great way for using up your scraps. So actually that's why I've put this as part of my scrap it videos because I didn't break into any of my larger papers for this. So that's that one. And then this one here is the same. You want to use a double-sided paper, or if you're using the origami paper, then that will have white on one side and then the colour on the other. Because you, when you fold it, you want to be able to see all of the folds and all the different sides. So, um, yeah, just so it really stands out, and I love it. So those are the two that I've done. So let me show you how to make them. All of the scraps that I used are from this paper pad here, so I didn't actually break into any of the, the full papers. So, um, yeah, you just cut in lots of circles for this technique, but that's the one I use. It's really nice, and you can see all the double-sided ones just here, um, and that's what I've used for the cards. Okay, so I've got all the bits and pieces here, because I'm going to show you how to do the fold with this one here. I've already gone and done everything I need for the card, and then I'll show you how to kind of assemble all that. That's the embossing fold I use. It's my Made to Surprise Zigzag embossing fold. It's a six by six. The sentiment inside the cards is this one here from the Card Making Magic Verses. And then I'm gonna use again the, a little something for you, which is that one that I used just there. It's one of my favorite stamp sets. And then for this one here, Flowers are like friends, they bring colour to your world and that's from the Crafter's Companion Floral Friends and it's the one at the top here. So those are the kind of the supplies that I've used. So I've got my two inch circle punch here and you can use any size circle that you want. Okay, so using the two inch circle will give you a rough, let me just give you the diameter of this and uh, then you'll know. So it's about a four inch, you know, diameter flower there using the two inch. So whatever the size of your circle is, double it and that will give you the diameter of the size flower that you're gonna end up with or just pattern and then that will kind of help you decide what size card you wanna put it on. So of course, if you wanna go bigger, if you like doing eight by eight cards, if you're gonna do five by seven and if you're gonna do more of your smaller cards, then, you know, you can just maybe I'd go down to maybe one and a half or one and three quarters. Whatever size circle you choose, you want to cut eight of them and then one more for you to be able to stick everything onto. So I'm just going to do one here that I'm going to be folding and then I'll cut another one and that'll be the one that I'll stick everything onto. This punch here was from Hobbycraft. I got it a long time ago. I think they still have it in there, but any, you know, punches, circle punches you can get. And also you could use your dies or you could cut and um, draw around something. I mean, you could draw around the bottom of your, you know, your glue bottles and things like that. So what you want to do on all eight of them is you want to fold in half and then fold in half again. Okay. If you don't want it, if it's quite thick card and you don't want to fold over like that, just fold in half one way, open it up and fold in half the other way. Just making sure that the folds, you know, from here join up. But you're just folding it in half, so you want to do that on all of them, okay? And I'm going to do it on this yellow one as well as I go along, just so you can see. So there's that one, and then that one. Now this here was 200 GSM. I wouldn't really go any thicker than that. This here is probably about 180. So you can see now I've got those folds. What you're then going to do is we're going to fold this, this kind of segment here, this quarter. You're going to fold it up, like kind of in, inside, like so. See what I've done there? Just making sure it starts there and there. See when it folds flat, it's within that section. And you're going to do that again. You're only doing it on two, and you're just doing it in the bottom two. 
again this is a thick cardstock but I just wanted to do it in white with the score line so it makes it easy so that's what you want to have okay and do make sure that you get them lined up with the score lines or the fold lines that you have there okay so again I'm going to do it on this one here because it's a bit softer okay now if you've got a directional paper you want to make sure it's the right way up when you've done this fold here so you want these folds to be at the bottom and then whatever pattern you've got if it is directional it's facing the right way up okay so that's what you've got then you're going to flip it over and you're going to fold up like so so you're then going to bring this edge here so it lines up with this fold in the center here so you can see that I'm just folding it across like so and again now when you bring this up you want to make sure that they meet because that's going to be the center of the flower okay and you can see if I bring in this one here what I mean by making sure that these bits join up at the top okay again I'm going to do it on that yellow one so I'm going to turn it over and then just bring this flat side so it lines up with that fold in the center now you want to do that eight times so you've got eight segments okay and then you want to cut another one and this is the one that I'm going to use to stick everything on now to make sure you want to get everything all the points when you stick it down need to you know sit perfectly with the center so I would fold this just like you do with all of the other segments so just fold it in half and then fold it in half again like so and then what I do is just I either get a pencil and just put a mark in the center I'm just going to use a pokey tool and just put a hole right in the center there and now I can sit all of these pieces so they just stay down right up to that point there now it's up to you you don't have to stick them down you can just now pop some glue on the back of this and start sticking them all on if they're a bit and have them a bit bouncy what I've been doing is I actually like to stick down just the inside pieces so on here just put my glue just all on this one fold it in and again open up that one so it's just those last pieces that you folded they're the ones you want to stick down so that these pieces stay lifted and you can see when I bring this one up how they're all they've still got that dimension to them but all this is flat I just preferred it I done one as a kind of a fresco and I didn't stick anything down and I didn't really like it so that's just a personal preference but if you do want to that you do want to go and stick those all down now so then they'll all be like that okay so I can take all that away now I'm going to use this one now what I've done for this one because I just wanted to play around is I've done four in one color and then four in another so I'm going to have you know every other will be slightly different now when you glue it if I bring in this one here you only want to glue you should have a fold here where I put this black line you just want to glue within that area there so you probably won't really see this but I can see that faint line there so I'm just going to add my glue like so and then I like to just pinch those pieces up so I can hold it like this and then I'm just going to sit this one down and I'm going to line it up with the fold there and make sure the point goes right into the center there because you've lifted them up you can make sure it's all stuck down now the glue shouldn't go over the edge because it will be the exact same distance from the center of this circle to the end will be the same of that area that you're gluing there so now I'm going to get one of the other colors again pop my glue on there pinch it and now you can just start sitting it next to each one but do make sure that the top here they line up so if you use your liquid glue you've got a little bit of wiggle room but you can see now how that joins and just make sure they really sit nice and snug butt them right up to each other like so and then again with this one so I'm going to repeat this all the way around and you, you'll know you're doing it right and you're getting it all lined up when four of the segments fit perfectly on one half of the circle actually I'll just do this one just so you can see and then I'll do the other half okay so you can see there that they sit perfectly on one half of that circle it looks so nice I love the the different colors there so I'm going to carry on and do this half okay and then that last one 
should fit perfectly into the last little space that you have there. It reminds me of Trivial Pursuit where you had the little cheese cheese segments that you had to slot in. So, okay. Next you want to decide with these pieces here what ones you want to have on the top and what ones you want to have underneath. So it's probably hard to tell but the four here, so this one, this one, this one and this one sit over these four. So because I've got the two different colours here I think I'm going to have the pinks at the bottom so I'm going to open them up first and then I'm going to have the lovely turquoise over the top like so. Just bring that up and you can see all that dimension. Now I've been putting these lovely faceted embellishments in the centre and that helps kind of just I guess flatten it a little bit as well but without it still allows everything else to stay lifted but it just keeps that centre bit a bit flatter so I'm just going to I've popped a little bit of hot glue I always do with the embellishments just kind of push that down a bit without that glue kind of oozing out like so now you could turn this into a spinner you could put a brad in first and then put the brad through this is my top layer through there so you sent them and then spin it around and I've done that with the, I can't remember what, I, what that one was but I've got another, well I've got quite a few spinning cards but I've done one very similar to this. I'll link it up here, it's a really nice tutorial, I know lots of you like that one. But now that's all ready for me to stick down. So I've been using some foam tape just on the back there and then I have a 6x6 six six pre-made card blank. I've got a pattern piece here which is five and three quarters square that's going to go on the top and then this piece I'm going to emboss and then that's going to go over the top again. Now if you want to stamp directly onto this then don't emboss it because that's with that one there. You can see I haven't embossed this piece but I do want to do this sentiment again. You can see the embossed effect there. So I'm just going to grab my embossing folder there. So this is five and a half squared this piece. Just sit it in the centre. I'm just going to run that one through my machine and now we can start building the card so I'm just going to grab my Kalau here and just stick this one down. I've done all mine so they're top folding but it's up to you. And then with this one again I'm going to pop it on some foam. And just sit that one over the top. And then take the foam off that one. Do I want it maybe like that actually? Yeah, I'm going to have it like that. And then I've already popped some foam on the back of this one here. Just sit that one down. Like so. Okay, pleased with that. And then I'm just going to finish it off with that same sentiment inside. And that one, I don't know if I read what it said, but it says, uh, this crafted card, handmade with love, created just for you, is sent to wish you happiness in everything you do. So let's get that stamped inside. There we go. It looks lovely. Those are my three Dahlia tea bag origami cards. <laughs> I think they look brilliant. I think they're so effective. They've got a geometric feel to them as well. It was almost like looking through a kaleidoscope when I look at this one here. I just think they're awesome and I can see these looking fantastic in Christmas papers. So you know go and have a look now see what lovely double-sided Christmas papers you've got. But even if they do just have single-sided just with the white on the back they still look really good and um, especially if you maybe do like different like greens and reds and golds and things like that I think it'll look fantastic so yeah so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial I will link up that spinning one and anything else that's kind of similar to this tutorial I'll pop up here as well and if you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed today's video if you click on my face there and hit the notification bell then you will be notified when I next upload a video I'll link everything that I've used below I think some of it's still available I'm not sure if the papers will but I'll link it there anyway and you can check it out but thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye